Here's your host. He's a few no-ops short of an exploit. He socially engineers the elderly, and he's the kill bit at parties. Paul Asadorian. Hello, and welcome to episode 218 for Paul.com Security Weekly, Thursday, November 4th, 2010. I'd like to welcome everyone to the show, especially Mr. Larry Pesci. Mm, my finger itches. <laughs> And uh, let's see who else we have. Intern Darren, mm -hmm. the, the other, other guy, guy. on the, the guy. sound video Skype. He's multitasking. He got somebody really t popular to tweet about him today too. He's from Rhode Island DOT. <laughs> this is Darren Crash Wiggly, his yeah. new stunt driver here for Pulse.com. <laughs> He'll be doing stunt driving in yep. all of our episodes. He in fact little, little accident on the way here. He in fact is the second Pulse.com member to get rear-ended before he come to came to the show. And not in the rest area kind and, of way. And on the highway in the car, not what you think. So, uh, Carlos Perez is with us. Carlos! Hey, guys. How, how are you guys doing? Wonderful. We even got Carlos on the video now. Yeah. That's amazing. It's amazing. He's got his Hack Naked t-shirt on. It only took us 200 episode, 18 episodes, right? Well, we'll sure. get there someday. <laughs> wow. All Dave, right. Dave is with us in the studio as well. Dave's going to be helping us out with some stuff. Say hi, Dave. Hey. Hi, Dave. <laughs> nice. Right on cue. That's what we like. Uh, just one quick announcement. Register now for Blue Teams Don't Call It a Comeback presentation with Core Security Technologies, John Strand, and myself, Wednesday, November 17th, 2010, yeah. 2 o'clock p.m. Eastern Time. Don't call it a comeback. They've been here for years. And that's Eastern Standard Time because, it, right, Eastern Daylight Time is going to end this weekend. Is it? So don't yes, forget it is. to this weekend. fall back. So do I? Yeah, don't forget the iPhone bug. So I, when you go, when you go to bed Saturday night, set your clocks back an hour. Oh, so I get an extra hour of sleep. Yeah, you get yeah. a whole extra hour of being a bachelor by yourself oh, this weekend, Larry. Oh, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't uh, want to know what you're gonna do with that hour. So with wait. that, we will take a short break and come back with a very special uh, guest appearance by none other than Bruce Potter. We are very happy to welcome Mr. Bruce Potter, who has been on the show before, so we welcome him back to the show to tell us about ShmooCon 2011. Welcome, Bruce. Yo, thanks for having me. Anytime, my friend. Now, Bruce, we all love ShmooCon, and uh, there's been a lot of uh, discussions in our IRC channel, where I saw it today, uh, on Twitter, and all around. Um, I, I just wanted to say that we all love ShmooCon. It's certainly a conference we plan to attend uh, forever. Um, and uh, we'll always be there in force, representing Paul.com at uh, what I think is one of the best run conferences out there. Um, and you wanted to come on the show to tell us a little about the uh, problems you've been having with ticket registrations. And I've got some other questions, you know, just about the, the new venue and various other things uh, at, uh, at ShmooCon 2011. So the floor is yours, my friend. Outstanding. Thank you. Um, you know, so first of all, I want to thank everyone who's written us or tweeted us or whatever today. The, the response has been uh, overwhelmingly positive, uh, which is amazing for how badly it's gone. Um, <laughs> The last few years, we've had to get more and more serious about ticket sales as more and more people have tried to uh, come to the conference. And I think the first few times that we had issues, there was some some uh, grumblings and, and uh, people were understandably upset um, for whatever reason. Um, it, I don't know if it's become tradition <laughs> or what, but... Um, Not know, the people, kind of tradition you want to promote, though. Mm. Well, and that's the thing. I mean, we feel, you know, we feel real bad about it because we, we put in all this time, all this energy, and, you know, as we post on the website today, we know you guys, you know, everyone who wants to come is putting in time and energy trying to get tickets and, you know, wants to make reservations and, you know, get on with their lives. And, uh, you know, we don't want to waste your time, and we certainly don't want to, you know, be doing a ton of work and not have it work out in the end. So... Um, you know, it, it's been, you know, technically it's been a heck of a challenge. Um, you know, every year we're always surprised at how many people are trying to register for, for the conference. Um, you know, well, I guess that's the positive in all of this is that everyone wants to attend the conference, Bruce, right? Well, certainly. And, and you know, that's, that's fantastic. And, and I'm, I'm glad that people think highly enough of the, the work that the team puts on and what all the volunteers do and the speakers and everything. I mean, people... Uh, put a lot of effort into the conference, and you know our our mission from the beginning has been really trying to support the community as a whole, um, and and part of that has been the transparency we've had with the conference to be able to you know 
let people know what we're doing. So if other people want to throw conferences, you know, they're welcome to. And I think, you know, in the last few years, I'm certainly not attributing it to us, but I like to think that at least we were helpful in some way. There's been a lot of conferences that popped up all over the world. Um, and, you know, I think that's fantastic. This industry needs, you know, more sharing, more openness, uh, more people involved. And, you know, we try to be as transparent as possible about the entire conference going process as we can um, so that, you know, A, you guys understand what we're going through when we screw up. Uh, but B, people that are trying to do this as well can not make the same mistakes that, that we've made. Mm, mm. So now you opened up uh, the first round of registrations uh, this week. So what happened? Well, you know, so we rewrote the entire engine uh, from scratch after, um, you know, really an admirable job of, you know, taking the first round of what we built years ago and scaling it to, you know, this kind of high demand situation that it really was never initially intended to run in. We decided that we were going to try to do something a little bit different, try to build it right from the ground up. Um, no, sorry, and, Bruce. By by different, you, we're still doing the barcode system and all that thing, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, from from the user's perspective, the process is still the same. You're going to mm -hmm. come to the website, you get a registration code, um, you come back an hour later, you know, buy the ticket, you get a barcode, you save that barcode, you don't give it to your friends or whatever, <laughs> and then right, you right. go up to the conference, you we scan it, and you get in. So the overall, I mean, the, the actual process is the same. The way that we're handling it on the back end um, is completely different. Um, and you know, there's there's always hiccups when you do, um, you know, that kind of uh, catastrophic, catastrophic upheaval. And I guess there's, you know, a couple things that are of interest. And one, you know, it's, it's, it's actually a pretty hard problem to do, especially um, recognizing that we really have to deal with an instantaneous load of um, upwards of 1,000, or what we saw today was 1,300 users all at once clicking F5. It's, right, it's, right. Not, it, it's not that there's a thousand users over the course of a day. It's that there's a thousand users in the two-second window, um, and you know what this box does for 364 other days of the year? Yeah, nothing. Nothing. Not a damn thing. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, so the problem isn't 1,300 people going to your site at the same time. Is that they're all there and they're all pushing F5 to refresh the page constantly? Right. And and you know we absolutely could build a scalable system. You know, after the last couple of um, attempts here, where you know there's a lot of things on the table about how we're going to try to fix this and. You know, a lot of people have suggested, oh, you could, you know, throw another web server on, you could spin these services off, you know, and every time we do that, that's another machine and another box that, you know, is going to basically sit around doing nothing, or at least we have to retask every year to, to get ready for the, the uh, right, ticket right. sales process and whatever. No, so, you know, it's kind of, it, it's difficult because, um, you know, we're all IT guys. Everyone that comes to the economy, I mean, people are into IT, they understand that these are solvable problems, but, you know, we're trying to not do way more than needs to get done but on the flip side again we don't want to be wasting your time so right. um, you know we're, we're working our butts off trying to find out yeah. how to do this right for the next go around now Bruce some, some people have, have suggested well why doesn't Shmukon just use Ticketmaster so you know there's a variety of issues one we like um, you know we trust ourselves <laughs> right. um, and maybe not uh, after the, few, the last couple of days as far as an availability perspective but certainly from a you know we like the fact that our attendees can pay us we don't sell our demographics to anyone there's information doesn't go anywhere we don't track who you are we don't really care mm -hmm. um, you know and, and once we start bringing in third parties you know your information goes other places and there's really nothing we can do about it um, there's also the fact of you know the the cost associated with a third-party processor, they're going to start taking a much larger cut than we take right now from our, our mm -hmm. payment providers. And a lot of people have said, hey, you know, 10 more bucks, you know, we'll, we'll pay it. You know, part of our goal is to be accessible to, you know, high school students and college students. And, you know, 10 bucks is 10 bucks. And it's, you know, for, for some people, that's kind of the difference. That's right. a drink so, at the know, bar. Excuse me? That's a drink at the bar. Well, I hope, you know, if you're going on like a Thursday night and drinking paps, it might be 10 drinks. Yeah. <laughs> So, you know, it, it, it's, it's, we're very conscious that, you know, we're trying to provide value to the attendees, and, and part of that we see is uh, the volunteers are putting in the time so that we don't have to outsource everything. You know, we could, have, we could outsource the bag stuffing. We could outsource all the PR. I mean, you could outsource all kinds of things, and the conference would cost $1,000 a person. You know, that's absolutely not the route that we're looking to go down. You know, mm -hmm. it's just, uh, we enjoy doing this. The volunteers really get into it, and I know the attendees get into it. Um, and so it's something that I think that we like keeping things close hold and solving the problems that we have the ability to solve. Right. So now you're limiting it to 1,500 people, is that correct? Yeah, it's 1,500 people again. Um, and it's, uh, uh, you know, give or take, it's, that's the, the target overall mm -hmm. um, uh, size that we're shooting for. And it's the same that we've been for the, the last couple of years. Right, right. 
So now, what? What does all these people now listening with bated breath? Um, when is the next registration going to open, and you know, how have you solved some of the the problems? Well, when the next registration is going to open, I'm, I can't answer that right now. We're still we're still digging through all the mm-hmm. data. We definitely um, we put a post on the site um, about an hour ago. Uh, we we definitely I, I think we were bumping up against some socket issues on FreeBSD, mm-hmm. uh, just given the way that the, the web server was failing. It had very strange failure condition and. Uh, um, I think we figured that out, and so now the concern is: okay, when we pull that stopper out, what happens? <laughs> right, <laughs> so we're, right. we're 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 kind of sorting through the details now that we've we think we've addressed the the first problem. You know, we never even got to the application that was written. <laughs> the oh, crazy thing: we spent all this time writing this application, and we've literally just been battling, you know, Apache and FreeBSD. So, right, um, right. You and know, you did I, I load I, you did load testing before, which uh, you know, of course, if we all like you said, we're in IT, we understand how that goes. We te- you tested it with load testing, and it worked fine. Yeah, I mean, and that's the thing. It's very tough to, to replicate this load. Um, you know, we had some IPs where we saw thousands of hits coming that were obviously corporate NAS. We had individuals coming that we only saw, uh, you know, a few object requests come through mm-hmm. um, periodically, you know, and it's a very kind of spiky load kind of situation, which is difficult, um, you know, especially with kind of the free tools that are out there to test. And again, I know a lot of people do this kind of thing for a living. There's lots of ways to, um, you know, to instrument your code and to load test it and things like that. Um, but again, you know, we're trying not to spend, you know, if we had a whole QA shop and an army of developers, absolutely, but right. we've got a bunch of people working in their spare time trying to have a job and a family so, and, you know, make this work. You're Along, so, yourself included. Uh, yeah. right. Along those lines, if someone out there is listening that wants to donate something to help you out, they should email you? Well, if people have, you know, suggestions or, or want to offer to help, we're always open to, you know, to that kind of thing, uh, info at shibukan.org. Um, and a number of people have written in offering uh, help of all kinds of different uh, flavors, which has been uh, been fantastic. And, and honestly, I think, um, you know, we're, we're always open to feedback, but um, we probably have enough cooks in the kitchen at this point. We just yeah. kind of need to sort out, you know, <laughs> sort out what we've got and figure out the best way to right. make this happen. I mean, if well, someone says, like, I've got a closet full of load balancers that they want to send you, they should email you, right? Sure. I mean, okay. and if, if people have, you know, a closet full of, you know, llamas that they want to send us, they should email. We might say no, but at least... <laughs> right. <laughs> at least you know that llamas are available. <laughs> well, exactly, because you never know. I mean, we may IP over... The, the avian IP thing didn't work, but maybe a you know, llama IP. IP. That's yeah. right. That's... Well, I think Excellent. all of us on the show would be much more would be very willing to help you, you know, generate barcodes for ourselves and make sure that process works just fine, right? <laughs> I'm sure, you get no shortage of that request. No, we've, we've definitely had offers for that too. <laughs> so the um, d- along those lines, so you'll let us know when obviously registration is open again. Check back to the site, and I mean, basically, you're working on it. Yeah, that's correct. So there will be a barcode contest. Uh, there will be another barcode contest this year. They certainly have had some some great. Um, uh, entries in years past, but we're you know, uh, encouraging people to think outside the box again and, and bring their most creative barcode. Excellent, excellent. My personal favorite last year was the Schmeet. The Schmeet, yes, the Schmeet was very good. <laughs> so um, the other thing is uh, there's a new venue, correct? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're going to be at the uh, Hilton uh, just down the street from, well, relatively just down the street from where we were last year. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, uh, they just finished a new ballroom. We seem to like the new ballrooms. I don't know how many, I think it was three years ago, um, at Lake Shmukon, four, that we ended up in the Thurgood Marshall Ballroom at the uh, Marriott, and we were the second event in there. And the first event, I think, was a Marriott event. Um, and everyone was walking around with red fuzz about from the, you know, the middle of their shins down on their pants because the carpet was still shedding. Um, <laughs> Nice. <laughs> so um, uh, the Hilton just uh, just finished uh, their new ballroom, and uh, it's quite nice. And I think that the overall flow uh, for the conference there will uh, will be very good as far as getting people in into talks and out of talks. Uh, the the rooms where the contests go on and the, the labs are going to be and that kind of thing have uh, double doors. The rooms are bigger in general, so I mean there's a kind of a more opportunity to get involved in some of the, the things going on, on the side rather than thinking that you're walking into a closet, which sometimes I guess you kind of were. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, you know overall we're really excited to be there. They've remodeled. I mean the rooms have been remodeled. The entire lobby's been remodeled, and the hotel is a little bit smaller, which frankly I think will maybe add to the kind of intimacy of the, the event. Um, the Marriott is a very large hotel, um, and the Hilton's a, a wee bit smaller, so uh, it may help the overall feel. Mm. Very cool. Yeah, so how's the bar? Uh, you know, when I think we were there last, they were still converting it. It had been something else like the front desk, oh. so uh, I'm not really sure how it stands at the moment. Interesting, interesting. 
So have you confirmed any any talks yet, or you're still in? You've always been busy with other things. <laughs> yeah, um, we've, we've definitely been a little preoccupied. Uh, we, we've had a, a fantastic um, uh, response to the CFP already, um, you know, and the, the talk quality looks to be very high this year. We're very excited. Um, you know, I'm anxious for the reviewing team to, to really sink their teeth in and, and get through all these talks. But, um, you know, obviously we've been a little preoccupied with other things. But, you know, the CFP is still open. The early submission deadline passed on, on Halloween, but uh, mm-hmm. we're still open for another month. So, you know, I encourage folks, if you got an idea, uh, by all means, submit it. Um, just go to the website and follow the directions, please. And you'd be amazed. When you have to review as many papers as a review, if you have people that aren't following the basic directions or where to put the abstract and where to upload files, you really quickly don't pay attention to the people that, you know, just Can't aren't directions. spending right. the time. So, you know, spend five minutes, do it right. You get a lot better chance of getting your talk accepted. Yep. Yeah, I heard, I heard there's a really great submission from, from one of the guys on this podcast. <laughs> yeah. I, uh, sorry I had to. Self-serving interest there. <laughs> so, Bruce, are there any new contests that are being held this year? Um, well, so the one new kind of ad hoc contest we had was the um, uh, the new T-shirt contest that we announced after the first failed round of ticket sales. Uh, so if you um, have, oh my dear God, caller ID, what a fantastic time to kick in. That's always great on the podcast. <laughs> oh, the jackass guests that showed up with caller ID. Um, <laughs> No problem, no problem. So anyway, the, um, uh, there's a t-shirt contest, and it's basically, you know, they try to come up with something that would be like a horror movie or something that's, you know, I survived the ShmooCon ticketing process or, you know, eaten alive by a ShmooCon ticket or whatever. Um, beyond that, uh, we don't have any other uh, particular new contests uh, coming online, but I'm sure some of the um, different uh, sponsors and things will have contests. They seem to have them every year. But uh, we don't have anything uh, anything specific, specific yet. And this isn't a wet T-shirt contest of security geeks, right? Please no. No, no. <laughs> um, and and graphics that simulate such activities will probably be some. You know, they will not. Right, be right, right. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So now, after last year, um, uh, are you doing any contingency planning for weather conditions? So we had two and a half feet of snow, and we still have the cons. I'm not sure what contingency plan you'd be looking for. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think some of the snow is still there, actually. <laughs> it was, um, it, it was. I mean, that was the thing. Last year was was kind of a once in a lifetime kind of thing, you know. Mm-hmm. Regardless of how good or bad the con came off, I mean, you had. 1,500 people all locked in a hotel for the weekend in downtown D.C. with the place to themselves. I mean, it was it was something else. It was a really good time. Um, you know, it worked out really well. We had people at our house for over a week because they were trying to get flights out because they had that second round of snow a couple of days after the con, too, mm-hmm. and shut the airports down again. So, um, you know, our contingency plan is, you know, we're going to have the con. And, you know, there's a hotel. You know, if you get yourself to the hotel, just, you know, Stay there, bunk up with friends, whatever you got to do, and uh, we'll we'll have a good time. So, so pack extra clothing is really the the, the advice yeah, there. Yeah, extra clothing. If you got some like power bars or something, you get one of those uh, little water things so that you can uh, you know take the muddy water and turn it into drinkable water. Nice, That'd be nice, good. nice, nice. Paul, we work from home, so we're used to wearing dirty, stinky clothes. Yeah, so we not don't, to, we don't need good. to pack extra clothes. We're well conditioned for those uh, scenarios. Uh, <laughs> so, is there anything else you wanted to tell us about about Shmukan, Bruce? Um. You know, not really. I think that, you know, we're really excited um, this year. And, again, uh, you know, we're really glad people are as interested as they are. Um, you know, we're obviously trying to continue our trend of, of being, you know, as open to the community as possible, even when things aren't going well. Um, you know, I think oftentimes your instinct is when things are going great, you tell everybody about it. When they're going bad, you shut your mouth. Um, but we recognize that that's, you know, that's part of part of what we're trying to cure in the industry is get people to communicate, get people to interact, get people to be more open and honest about uh, the discussion we're having regarding technology and you know threats and things of that nature and so it's kind of our job with the con to to carry on that that uh, that tradition so you know again if people have comments or suggestions good bad whatever we're we're willing to take it just email us and and let us know and and we're happy to, to have a conversation Excellent. Well, thank you very much, Bruce, for coming on the show huh? and uh, giving everyone information. Oh. Yes. Are we, we going to say congratulations on Potter Plus One? Oh, that's right. Congratulations, Bruce. You're, um, you're you have a new addition, a new module. Yes. Yes. We 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 we. we...
again. And, child um, process. Yeah, there's, there's a new <laughs> child process. And it was actually funny. We were, we were um, not only had our own uh, uh, child today, who's about a month old, but we also had um, our niece over, um, who is much less um, docile than our child, and so she cries a lot and that kind of thing. And right about 10 minutes to 12, she just started tearing into it. <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm trying to, we got a conference call going on. I'm trying to talk to people. I feel real bad because the kid's crying. And it just all hell broke loose in the web server. It was, and then everybody on the conference call was crying. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was bad. I mean, it was certainly, it was it was fantastically uh, stressful. Um, you know, nothing like the sound of a crying child to really just ratchet up the stress level that extra extra little bit. Absolutely. <laughs> oh, yeah. I hear, it makes the hairs on your neck just stand up. <laughs> yeah. so, so, Bruce, I will say that, you know, I'm very happy for traditions, even though they may be the tradition of uh, uh, registration issues. But I will say it's better than the tradition of DEF CON being canceled every year. Well, and I see attrition tweeted that we were going to use Ticketmaster, and I hope everyone realized that most of what they tweet are just making up. So. Yeah, yes. Paul didn't. I didn't, and I <laughs> retweeted it, and then I had to delete it. I'm sorry. <laughs> I apologize for that. I got pwned. No, it's I, okay. Yeah. We it, It's all in fun with those guys, so I'm, I'm fine with that. <laughs> okay, good, good. Well, Bruce, thank you very much, and uh, we will look forward uh, to an update, and uh, hopefully everyone can uh, get in the first round and get some tickets, and we're very much looking forward to, uh, to ShmooCon. All right, well, look forward to seeing you guys there. All righty. Thanks, Thanks, Bruce. Bruce. Take care. And with that, we will take a short break and come back uh, with our, hopefully with our next guest. Or maybe a tech segment. It all depends. But in any case, we're going to take a short break and then we'll be right back.